you'll note that I, uh, in, the, in the memo, I uh, included some quotes from uh, Clayton Christensen, and uh, this uh, book is certainly influencing uh, my view of the future, and uh, uh, in his belief that uh, technology will play a, a large part in, the, uh, uh, in our students' uh, education in the future. So, we're going to talk about uh, uh, five uh, areas uh, outlined in your packet, and the first one is uh, future trends. Uh, we looked at a number of uh, listings of future trends. They usually come out uh, in January as, a, as the start of the new year. And in every list of whether it was the top three, or the top five, or the top ten, uh, two areas were very pr prominent, uh, and that is cloud computing and netbooks. And I want to just spend a second talking about cloud computing uh, because it may be a new term uh, to some. Uh, I've provided a, a definition here. Basically, cloud computing is when you're getting your services from the Internet. Uh, you don't have the program loaded locally on your, uh, your hard drive of your, of your computer. Uh, you're getting it in the most term for this is software as a service. You're getting that from what we call the cloud. And the reason they call it the cloud is network engineers for years have utilized the, uh, the little bubble cloud as anything going up to the Internet when they're designing networks. They let that, you get that from the cloud. So that's where the term cloud computing comes from. Uh, of course, Google Apps is uh, uh, one of the most uh, widely known uh, cloud computing applications out there, as, as uh, uh, there are a number of others uh, that uh, you're very familiar with. Some of the advantages for cloud computing, uh, low cost and free, that's a good one for, uh, for education. Uh, explosive growth in, uh, growth in applications uh, certainly creates a lot of new uh, opportunities for collaboration, and uh, it is uh, disrupting uh, existing methods of delivering services. So it's having a really big impact, not only in, in schools, but businesses, uh, and, and just about every type of enterprise. Uh, a term that is similar to cloud computing is another term called virtualization. And uh, this is a movement in the computing industry that is, uh, is gaining a lot of popularity, uh, certainly in business, now at the university and uh, in K-12. And that's the creation of virtual desktops or virtual servers uh, rather than having it actually on your, uh, your local uh, workstation. And there's a lot of advantages for virtualization. Most come with scalability, decreasing energy costs, support. Uh, another term we've used is consolidation or optimization, where we're able to take uh, six servers and consolidate that down into one. So virtualization is a very important uh, topic in moving forward. And uh, there, there's an, an initiative uh, last year called the uh, North Carolina School Connectivity Initiative, where the state was uh, connecting uh, every school district in the state to the fiber backbone uh, of, the, uh, of the state. And I actually asked the, uh, the state CTO, I said, okay, this is opening up all kinds of new opportunities now that every school district is connected. Uh, there, there's probably some uh, opportunities for the state to start delivering some services to schools that we have not had an opportunity before because we're all islands. Uh, so uh, he asked me to come and talk to a, a statewide teleconference about that group. And uh, after I uh, provided that presentation, I found myself a co-chair of a statewide committee <laughs> that's uh, looking at uh, virtualization and its impact on K-20, uh, the universities and, and public schools. And it's a uh, partnership of uh, UNC, NC State, MCNC, which is the state backbone providing all the, uh, the networking to schools and our school district. As I mentioned, uh, it is uh, creating a, a lot of opportunities uh, for our, our school districts uh, across the state uh, in looking at virtualization. How can we better provide the services to our schools and we're doing, uh, doing it right now individually? And the, my main point to the, uh, the, the, the state leaders was that we have 115 school districts across the state, uh, 2,400 schools, over, almost a half a million student computers, a couple hundred thousand of, of staff computers, and we're all challenged with supporting the servers, the workstations. And actually, we're all doing this individually. And, and it seems to me that we're all trying to provide the same product, the standard course of study. So uh, as I presented that to them, uh, I focused on what opportunities this new statewide backbone has and how we can leverage this uh, capability, how we can collaborate with the other school districts, and how we can uh, stimulate some discussions at the highest level of the state where the funding is to invest in a virtualized environment for all of our students and all of our staff. So that uh, is moving forward, and we're hoping within six to nine months that we'll have a message to take to the, uh, the state and um, um, get some discussion going on up at the, uh, the state level. 
So that's uh, cloud computing or virtualization. Uh, the other trend is netbooks, and I'm sure you've read uh, this in the, uh, uh, in the media, uh, the, the small mini laptops. I've actually put a couple of them on the, uh, the table for you to look at. Uh, lower cost, you can access web apps. Uh, I certainly have the potential to increase access in our uh, classrooms because we're able to put more out for the, uh, for the dollar. Uh, some of the things that we're looking at right now are the durability. This is a very, a very new product. How will it last in our, uh, in our uh, elementary, middle, and high school classrooms? Uh, what types of classroom applications can we uh, support on them? And also, it's a transition technology. It's moving from uh, laptops with programs or local, uh, uh, accessing local programs. Well, now we're going to be using cloud computing, and you're going to be sharing docs on Google Docs and, and uh, uh, accessing Skype for teleconferencing and things like that. So it's a, it's a transition. So we're currently evaluating a number of the, uh, the models uh, that are available and hope to be uh, making a recommendation to our schools uh, very soon on uh, which uh, we feel is the, is the best in investment. Now I'd like to take this switch here and just flip it on and move immediately to this new environment. Um, but there are some forces that are slowing us down. Uh, we have some legacy programs, and legacy is a term they use in, in technology quite a bit, meaning the programs that we already have or the equipment that we, we already have. Uh, we have hundreds of applications loaded on servers and, 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 and software, and you can't just immediately say those are, those are non-existent anymore. Uh, the tech, textbook publishers uh, provide us with a lot of challenges because they target the mid to low technology district, um, and they're still providing us with CDs to load on every machine. Uh, they're also very scared of putting all of their content on the web. So they're in a very uh, interesting place as far as the technology right now. Um, but uh, So the technology publishers provide us with some uh, challenges. User preference and experience, we've all had a long history of doing it the way uh, that we're familiar with. I, I have to commend uh, uh, Denise for her uh, experimentation with Google Docs in our, uh, in our admin office. I have to commend Neil for, for letting us take that risk on the, uh, the school uh, um, uh, report cards and uh, uh, allowing us to do that. Uh, it was not easy. There's a lot of relearning, uh, but uh, it opened up some collaborative aspects of that process that we didn't have before. Um, there's certainly a technical uh, learning curve needed. Um, and this learning curve, uh, as, as I mentioned, that's something that we can't really underestimate, that we're all familiar where the buttons are on PowerPoint, and now you're telling us to go somewhere else, and it, uh, uh, there's a significant learning curve to these new, uh, new technologies. Also, the uh, confidential nature of uh, student information and some of our business processes. You just can't put everything out there on these free tools. There's some protection that we need to have. Uh, so we, as a district, need to develop a transition plan to this new model. Uh, we have to rethink the word refresh. We've used that for the last five or six years. Oh, we need to refresh, refresh. Well, this means that we're not necessarily going to be refreshing with the same. We're going to be looking at new technology. And instead of looking at a one-to-one -one refreshing of workstations, we're going to be looking at student access points. How can we get more student access points in the school? So it, uh, it, uh, it challenges us to really look at that refresh model. Uh, we need to reduce or eliminate software purchases, and we've pretty much done that over the past few years. We don't buy much software. Uh, promoting uh, Web 2.0 applications, transitioning, help people transitioning from the software tool they're using now to some of the free tools on the web that have the same functionality, just different. Uh, R&D, we need to perform some of that on some of these virtual, uh, virtualized solutions. Uh, certainly leveraging uh, state resources and uh, advocating the state for some uh, investment in, the, in a statewide K-12 solution.